Um, Succession, come on. It's it's great. Yeah, you, you can't sit down listening to it. That shit goes um, so hard. I have it on my playlist. Like I literally yes. have it on my gym playlist. You yes. have to. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. hype. Yeah, it's really hype. <laughs> All right, party goers, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the galaxy's most mediocre pop culture podcast. In the studio today, via satellite, via Zoom, we got Spencer and Josh from the Holy Goof Podcast. Fellas, how are we doing tonight? How's it going? going? (laughs) We're good. We're good. Thank you for having us on. Just happy to be here. Hey, yeah. glad <laughs> to have you guys on. Be sure to check them out on social media, especially Instagram. They got some of the best content out there. The videos oh. are great. I love when you guys do like just kind of like the random kind of top tens. And we're, we're going to yeah. get into that in a little bit. But, um, you know, I'd love to know. And I know the audience does, too, because we announced that we were going to be interviewing you guys. So we did get some questions in here. But, you know, first and foremost, you know, what was the inspiration of getting started? And, you know, where did the name Ho- the Holy Goof come from? Wow, we got questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got we fans, got son. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. This All is right. so Spencer's department, so I'll, I'll let him handle this. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll say the spiel. Um, we got started uh, COVID time. Like I think mm-hmm. a lot of little media outlets began uh, with nothing to do but sit and think about your passions. Uh, we sat and thought about ours and it was film and TV and, uh, you know, all aspects really of, uh, pop culture, uh, m- music. Uh, and so Josh and I, uh, sat around and we did like a little trivia show that this is pre goof. We, we did like a little, uh, trivia show on Instagram, just the two of us kind of, uh, passing time. And then we decided we should definitely do something like this, but not. And we landed on a website and I came I didn't come up with the name, the Holy goof, but I, I liked the phrase, the Holy goof from on the road by Kerouac. Nice. Uh, they referenced Dean Moriarty as the Holy goof. And I always, that always stuck with me. And I said, I want this to be a name of something. Don't know yet. And so we landed on website. And so we started the website in about 2020. And then we got our third goof, Brett and another member who is not a member anymore, but he was well, a life lifelong at heart, heart member. Uh, we mm-hmm. had him on um, and we just started rolling with the articles at first and, mm-hmm. um, you know, in-depth kind of in movie reviews, things like that before we got kicked off on social media. I'm talking too much. Josh, go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You can't just slide over getting kicked off social media here. So what, what, what happened that you got kicked out of social media? Well, no, we 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 kicked off social media. Oh, kicked so, off. Okay, oh, I was, got kicked out. That was news no, 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 no. to me too. We kicked I was off. Like, wow, I, I didn't okay, know. Okay, okay, got you. Yeah. I was like, kicked you off social media. That to the side. No, we didn't kick, get kicked off yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hoping. Yeah, that that's that's about right. That was the starting, and then um, we we're making a lot of like long form YouTube content that was a lot of like high effort stuff to cut, and I'm I'm sure you know, you know, you get these these long conversations and you got to cut them down and it's a whole thing. And then we're doing all this B roll and post-production on them. And it just, I, I started getting burnt out cause I was kind of yeah. doing all the editing at that point. And we were also doing this like high density, like put out articles and all these listicles all the time. So we kind of just regrouped and said like, all right, how can we focus this up and make it, you know, cause it's three of us. Yeah. Um, so how can we, how can we take all three of our energy and kind of put it into something that's, a little more efficient for our time so we're not going to burn out and um i had been i'd just been watching people on twitch for a while and i liked the platform and i had kind of built my own pc for video editing and stuff and i thought i I have a computer that could handle live streaming like why don't we try it out um and we thought it would just be a fun little studio space that we could go live nobody would watch but we could take that video then and cut it up later and it would kind of save us some time yeah. in the the shooting part of things and people started watching and the and the twitch kind of started popping off and we started being able to get feedback from the audience and stuff like that and we're still growing we're still very sure. very young on there but um that kind of gave us the ump we needed to you know be able to push through and, and keep going and you know we've refocused all short form content on social media all that stuff and it's kind of how we ended up where we're at now yeah I love it, it- yeah, Twitch became a studio because we d- we were wasting a lot of time cutting long form YouTube videos. Uh, yeah. Three three people, uh, an hour of recording, sometimes on their cell on our cell phones. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, mostly on our cell phones yeah, that we would then that we would then uh, take 
like a week or two to cut for 15 views. So yeah. we decided, uh, let's try something new. And so yeah, yeah. Instagram. And ironically, that's what we're doing again now, because it kind of feels like the white whale that we never got sure. is actually getting something working on YouTube for us. So we're actually now getting back into that now that we have a little bit of extra time. So we're we're back in we're back in this space again. Try to try to do those long form conversations. It's tough. I mean, shout out to you guys. It's it's tough. It's tough to do. It's hard to stick it out. So uh, I appreciate yeah. anybody who does it. I have yeah. a lot of respect for anybody who makes their own content and publishes oh, it. Oh yeah, it's. I tell people all the time. I'm like, it's a marathon, man. It's not yep. a race. Mm -hmm. Like if you think you're gonna be Joe Rogan overnight, you're yeah. you're not. No, I mean, yep. unless you're a celebrity with already a built in fan base. Yes, you know, you got a pretty good easy street. Then, of course, if you're dating uh, Taylor Swift, your podcast yeah. goes number one. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the brother of the guy who's dating, right. dating right. Taylor Swift. And I mean, I'm an Eagles fan. I love Jason Kelsey to death. Oh. I think, I mean, it's a great podcast regardless of uh -huh. who's dating who, but obviously that it helps. Helps. It yeah. helps. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Jason Kelsey. For the rest Kelsey. of us surfs down here, it doesn't really, yeah. uh, we got to put in the work. And I agree with you guys too. I mean, we started off, we were fortunate enough to get some sponsors early and we actually went to a studio. Big shout out to Press Play Studios nice. to where we were able to just go in, record, and then, you know, I would just kind of give notes like, hey, put in this sound effect here, put in this movie clip here and not have to worry about it. Granted, you know, we were shelling out some dough and mm -hmm. a couple of years later, I started doing it myself to save money. But now I'm like, I just need to make enough money to pay someone else to do it because it is a grind. The editing itself, yeah. it, is, it, can, mm -hmm. it can take it out of me, you know, especially yep. six years in where I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want to release an episode this week. I'm just going to chill. And when I feel yeah editing i'm going to edit so I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll see you guys too so because yeah it's all you know i think in this game it's it's adjusting right and just kind of seeing what works what doesn't work and and i'm really glad you said twitch too because twitch is like the next frontier for us and mm -hmm. we started doing more youtube content where yeah or it was like maybe we would release a youtube video like once every couple months and even in the beginning we would put the podcast episodes on YouTube, which is still mm -hmm. kind of a pain. And yeah, now it's just, uh, you know, myself and my daughter and, uh, you know, big ups, uh, obviously everybody on the podcast, but we do the majority of the editing and all that. And yeah. even my daughter yesterday, we were doing the Deadpool Wolverine episode, which we will not talk about, <laughs> but, uh, you know, she was like, dad, I love doing these live streams. Cause that way I can do like minimal stuff. Cause these, our videos are brutal. That's oh, yeah. exactly it. That's what. Definitely. That's why we started live streaming. Yeah, Listen, it's just, I mean, it's, everything's together. It's all in one yeah. place, and it's easy. I mean, there. I always, I always say that there is a level of insanity when it comes to content creation. Create creation, like we're 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 insane. Like we just bang our heads against <laughs> yeah. the wall, and we just keep doing it and doing it just out of the love for the game. But yeah. you know, that's why you know when we started the website, we um we have we still have it. It's a section of our website called the Mad Ones, another Kerouac reference. And it, uh, you know, it, we, we wanted to use it as a place to shout out to other creators for uh, w whether they are content creators or just artists, uh, musicians, uh, to give them a little so sort of own web web page on our on our site. Uh, if they're writing short stories, get them published in a way. Uh, so, I mean, it really started out as a way to shout out people who are insane like us uh, yeah, yeah. And, and sort of give them a voice in a way. Yeah. And uh, while we sort of found our own, you know. Yeah. And I mean, you, you guys sure have, I think just the camaraderie you have, you could tell that you're good friends. The rapport is fantastic and everything definitely seems on brand. Like I've never, I haven't seen anything on social media where it was like, oh my God, what, what were they thinking where you know, <laughs> he, we did this in the beginning? There was a couple of times where I had to like restrict access for a couple of our guys. <laughs> Cause it was yeah, like, okay, this is not on brand. We need to get on brand. So you guys have definitely done a great job with that. Appreciate um, you. When it comes when it comes to editing, just uh, another question that we got from from some fans out there, and e even here in Greensboro, we're right in like in between Charlotte and Raleigh, right in the middle of the state. So it's one of those like we're I think we're like the third or fourth biggest city, but it's definitely city country vibe, and a lot of people are starting to mm -hmm. podcast here too. So one of the questions for you guys is when it comes to editing, are there any particular um, like tools or software, whether if it's your phone or on your laptop, that you like to use? Oh yeah, this is yeah, this is big. Um, I am, I, I, so I have a background in design, uh, mostly graphic design, but when the pandemic hit, I, I'm also a musician and that's what I was working full time before uh, the pandemic. And uh, when that hit and I couldn't work any gigs anymore, I kind of shifted into design. Um, 
So I'm somebody that is fortunate enough to have a job that will pay to have like, you know, the Adobe suite and everything like that. And that's great. But I also am very lazy and I want to do things quickly. So I'll use any cheap program. I'm not one of these purists that's like, no, it has to be done in After Effects or it's not real. No, use Canva if that helps. I don't care what it is. Um, So actually, shouts out to Wondershare Filmora. They have a lot of great built-in effects already. (laughs) um, And it's like a quick edit. Like if you're just trying to do basic stuff and add transitions, I'll throw stuff into there before I use Premiere nine times out of 10. Um, And Spence has like, thank God, been learning a lot of editing like on the fly and now is like a great editor himself he does all the short form content now like nice. anything and, and actually a lot of the uh new stuff we've been doing on youtube those are all him adding in the post-production and stuff um and he's using cap cut now i think right spence yeah i am um, i learned on the go i've I've, yeah. I've become an editor because i had to so yeah. <laughs> but, uh yeah i use cap cut now um again shout out to the you know the smaller uh sort of uh graphic design tools mm-hmm. i use CapCut desktop it's it's great with captioning it's it's got a nice 4k export uh i looked at adobe one time and said absolutely not i don't this is <laughs> right. this is this right. is a foreign language to me uh yeah. CapCut spelled everything out for me and i still have to do a little bit of research so i use CapCut yeah. uh mostly desktop i did see um it's got a, like nice functions on the phone too if you want to do it on the go um, I like to get in the weeds, so I like to use desktop. But on the phone, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good yeah. little editor. And you said it was called CapCut. Yeah, CapCut. Cap Cut. It's okay. it's uh it's really was made to help uh ten year olds make TikTok videos. And... <laughs> yeah, it's for social media. But <laughs> yeah. it, hey, it's a functional editor. But it's, and it, it's in depth. Yeah. And what you just said—that's kind of what we look for—is like it has a good caption uh program. So like mm-hmm. it really depends on what your use case is. But if you find you're making a specific type of content over and over again. And there's a program that does that specific thing really well, then there's no shame that it's not, you know, DaVinci or Adobe Premiere or anything like that. Who cares? As long as you can, it helps yeah. you make the thing that you want to make. And in a way that's not going to make you like pull your hair out, then like go for it. Yeah. You know? The key is efficiency. And yeah. as yeah. as creators, when you realize that your time is so sacred. So yep. what is the program that will help you to be able to do this efficiently and optimize the quality of it? And for me, that is CapCut. For others, it's other things, but sure. it's all about your time. Please just hold precious your time. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Because, like, you were getting at early on, you have all this energy. At least this was my experience. You have all this oh, yeah. energy, and you're like, oh, I'll spend overnight 12 hours on a video. Who cares? Five hour export. Who gives a shit? But then, after a few months of that, or maybe yeah. a year, a couple of years, if you've mm-hmm. got a really strong will, you'll get burnt out. So, like, yeah, protect, like Spencer, protect yourself now. Like, do things. Yeah cut as many corners as you can now make it as easy on yourself as you can now. Cause yeah, like you said, yeah. it's, a, it's a marathon. So there you go. hang in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cut. Protect your neck out there with some cats. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. exactly. That's right. <laughs> the marathon continues. That's yeah. right. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, I'm one of those people where I do buy my daughter, the, uh, I think it's illustrator one, you know, mm-hmm. once a year for that $250 whopping price tag. Yep. It's just like, Hey, yep. this this is part of your fees that I pay you to edit the videos. Yep. Yeah. If you want it, this is what you get. But me, like for, for the audio, I still use iMovie to edit the audio. And then Canva yeah. is my 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 latest best friend. I love Canva. So yeah, me too. Great. Dude, can I tell you, I get paid to do graphic design work professionally. I do so much in Canva. It's easy. Work smarter, <laughs> not go. harder, man. That's right. Well, it not, looks that, great. not that we don't work hard, but I tell people all the time, I'm like, if I can work smarter, you best believe I'm mm-hmm. going to do it. So work smarter. Yep. That's right. Yep. So what are, you know, whether if it was just starting out or even currently, you know, what are some of your favorite pop culture outlets, whether if it's podcasts, website, things like that? Ooh, I love, I always shout them out. They're a YouTube uh, channel called um, Corridor or Corridor Crew is kind of the behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um they started as Sam and Nico, very early YouTubers. They're they're VFX artists, special effects artists. They kind of built their own little studio space in LA. Um, and all their content surrounds, either they're making their own original content or they're breaking down, like, this is how this effect was done. Or they have series like, um, you know, VFX artists review good and bad CGI, stuff like that. And they'll right. sit and kind of break things and pick it apart. And uh, I just love that. I love how technical they are. And I like that they're two best friends who like obviously have, 
at, you know, they they started doing this together. They're continuing it. It's evolved and grown into this other thing where now they're like getting hired to work on movies and stuff like that. And I don't know. To me, their their whole journey is really cool, and the content's really really great. So, court, shout out to Corridor Crew. I love them. Corridor yeah. Digital, hit yeah. us up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> friends of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I look towards I look for like who can entertain, right? Because yeah. I think especially in the Twitch landscape and and even short clips, like you just want to make sure that your rapport is good with whoever it is you're recording with. So I'd look at um take your shoes off. Rick Glassman's a big one for yeah. me. Yeah. Um comedic timing, the editing process, thinking it through before you kind of sit down. Uh, I, I value that in what he does. Uh, bad friends for rapport. Uh, those mm-hmm. two yeah. uh, kind of like have this back and forth that like is just pops off the screen. Uh, again, entertainment. So I go to Joe Budden podcast because he knows how to make people <laughs> pissed off. And yeah. it's a value yeah. to have in this industry. Yeah. Uh, as far as like content creation, shout out Straw Hat Goofy. Um, I think when it comes to this this era and like the TikTok game and the short clips and the getting people engaged, it's Straw Hat knows what he's doing, especially early yeah. on. Nice. Uh, I forgot to also uh, like podcast podcast, but last podcast on the left again, because they're all just friends hanging out, uh, going through stuff. I love them. And yeah. um, the dollop, which is like a, a history podcast that the formats really cool. And again, fr- two friends who obviously have camaraderie able to hang out. I think that's kind of what we both uh, look yeah. up to is like, being yeah. able to monetize your friendship. That's yes. right. Right. There it is. There it is. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what it is. Monetization yes. yeah. to be a yeah. course. There's a value yeah. in friendship. There's a value. Learn how hey. to make it. Hey, yeah. you, you know, can't knock the hustle, plain and simple. You can enjoy. <laughs> and I mean, I feel like when we were talking pre show, you guys started this for the same reason, you know, I wanted to start Zero Dark Dirty. It was it was pre pandemic, but our, our friend Matthew, big shout out to Matthew. He had a, a heart transplant about a year before and had a lot of complications and a lot of things. And I was going through a breakup and I was like, I need some kind of an outlet that's not my job that yeah. I enjoy. Yeah. I mean, uh, as you can tell from the collection, like we talked about earlier, uh, you know, pop culture has been my entire life, just mm-hmm. movies, music, entertainment my dad and I, the whole family, you know, we still do movie nights, the entire uh, nice. gambit of it. I tell people all the time, I was listening to Andrew Dice Clay when I was like five and hmm. watching Friday the 13th right after. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. something that I've yeah. always been passionate about. And he was the first person I asked and it was really more for, for him to get him kind of up and running again. And um, you know, he's been, he's been doing great. So, you know, health wise, it hasn't allowed him to be on the show. And again, Matthew, we love you. Can't wait to see you back on. And I wanted to do a collective of guys and girls that I was friends with that also love pop culture, because when it's natural like that and it's not forced, you know, you can't fool the audience. And that's the thing. And I wanted it to be a conversation, not something to where we all agree on everything and Mm -hmm. or disagree on everything. There was a couple episodes we did in the beginning to where we should have done some like pregame prep because there Mm -hmm. were episodes that because we are very much alike, we did like favorite movie soundtracks. And by the time it got to me, they were all all used up. You know, <laughs> yeah. Night, uh, yeah. almost famous, everything. Yeah. Else. So, oh, yeah. It, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it's a gift and a curse at the same time. But, yeah. uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's great to just have that camaraderie. And you guys definitely have that, which is why it's so entertaining to to see what you do. And, uh, you know, it's it's just great. So, yeah, yeah. we've well, been likewise. fortunate. We've been fortunate enough to uh, just be three three guys with like varying opinions on and tastes. So it, it works, you know, because I hear that you don't want to agree on everything. You want to actually have a conversation that's kind of insightful and 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 sort of interesting. So we we definitely all three of us have very different opinions on it, especially film. <laughs> and yeah. So it's it's good conversation starters. Yeah. 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 So, you know, being that it's it's summertime and which which part of Jersey are you guys located out of? So I'm I'm uh, like South Jersey, like okay. Jersey Shore area, basically. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. I'm Brooklyn. I'm Brooklyn, time. New York. That's right. Oh, Brooklyn, nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm Brooklyn, nice. New York. Love it. East Coast representing here. So, That's right. um, summertime, obviously big in the on the shore, always <laughs> big in the city. I mean, it's big everywhere, right? I, I wanted to ask you guys, what are some of your and they they don't have to be specifically about summer or take place during the summer. 
but mm -hmm. I know I have just some movies that I kind of enjoy different times of the year. So, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to ask you guys, what are some of your favorite, you know, summertime films, whether having to be based in the summertime or just some that you just enjoy watching in the summer? Yeah, I like this prompt a lot because I didn't realize that I had a theme, but the more I was thinking about, it, I definitely do. And these aren't like traditionally summer movies, but I like stuff that's like upbeat, a little inspirational, has some whimsy or magic to it. I want stuff that's going to make me want to like get out of my house. You know what I mean? Like I'll watch it and then go, that was great. Now I'm going to the park. Um, <laughs> so like some favorites. I don't I don't know if it's appropriate to still like Shia LaBeouf movies, but Peanut Butter Falcon, so, something like that, like very heartfelt. Um, oh, one one. Uh, actually, summer movie is Wet Hot American Summer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Out. Nice. Um, but like, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. I like, you know, kind of these whimsical, offbeat, but like ultimately feel good movies. That that for me is like good summer vibes. Yeah, love well, it. Spencer, That's great. Uh, <laughs> it's funny you said Shia LaBeouf. I also had Peanut Butter Falcon. Um, Did you but, really? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But American Honey is another one of those. Uh, summer vibes um i think for me uh i like like a childhood outside movie so things like a sandlot yeah. or stand by me sort of summer vibes for me like anything where, where there's activities outside but like a gang of troubled youth i'm with that um <laughs> yeah also any <laughs> any action movie is good for the summer like for some reason like obviously that's that's why they have like these summer blockbusters so any mission impossible uh top gun maverick obviously uh bad boys uh you know that bad boys miami feel is a great summertime yeah. film um uh this is a, a weird one but Obscure, a little obscure, but Adventureland, and maybe not nice. obscure because it is based in like the summer theme park vibe. It's a very yeah. good summer movie. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I like it. I like it. Great list right there, guys. I'm I'm kind of all over the place. You mentioned Sandlot. Like to me, that's every Fourth of July, right around there. Even if it's not right on the Fourth, I'm watching the Sandlot. Yeah. Um. You know, nostalgia is very, very big for me and the family. And my niece was actually born on the Fourth of July, so we try to make it a a, a family thing. Um, going back to old school stuff, summer school with, uh, with Mark Summers, I think it is. Mm. I never saw um, it. Yeah. Eighties classic, um, uh, back when there actually used to be summer school. I don't even think that's a thing anymore with, with no right. child left behind. No, my right. brother is in summer school. It's online. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> online. I like how you did that. We used to have yeah, to get to up and go to school again. <laughs> Dude, that was the most terrifying thing being a kid of the eighties and nineties is like if <sighs> grades were shit that you had to go to summer school. Like I'd much rather get like the chancla from my mom or dad yes. that, or the yes. belt before I go to summer school, but it's the worst yeah, great movie. For those of you that haven't seen it, check it out. He's a teacher that gets kind of suckered into teaching the uh, summer school class. And of course the, the class itself is very ex eccentric. Let's just say there's two guys in there. One of them's name is chainsaw. They're horror movie fanatics and the homework assignments are, are trash. Their field trips, they get to go like to the beach and stuff, but nice. just good 80s kind of B classic there. Better Off Dead uh, is another one that, yeah. I, that I love with um, our boy. Gosh, why am I forgetting his name right now? Um, Oh, goodness gracious. This is why we edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, no, bl I'm blanking myself. Oh Literally, man, he was yeah. in High Fidelity. John Cusack. John Cusack. John Cusack. Yeah. I would have never yeah, gotten there. I don't. Yeah. I know his face. John, John Cusack. Yeah. That's a good one. I feel like uh, TNT. You know the 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 movies. The guy, just like you said, the action films. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know there was a there was a period there where Will Smith was the king of the summer. Oh yeah. yeah. In Independence Day, Men in mm -hmm. Black. You mentioned yeah. Bad Boys earlier. Bad Boys. So I do end up watching a lot of Will Smith movies, and and even though it's not really a summer movie, but I, I love Hancock. I think yeah, that <laughs> yeah. movie is underrated, fantastic. super yeah. underrated. Yeah, yeah. underrated. So, you know him, Charlie uh, Theron. That's like Jason Bateman, like during his kind of comeback trail too, yeah. when he was yeah. doing smaller roles, and mm -hmm. just uh, you know, kind of our first glimpse of seeing a, a superhero that just didn't give a damn before yeah. we got the boys and of course yeah. all this other stuff now yeah uh, obviously a pg-13 version of it but um yeah yeah those are are some of my summertime picks so good good shit right there love that. yeah oh, hancock love that. was before yeah pre-boys that that's exactly that vibe yeah yeah a hundred percent um so next thing here i wanted to talk about because you know i feel obviously disney and pixar get a lot of love when it comes to animated films of course they sure. do 
And of course, DreamWorks does. But I wanted to ask you guys, you know, what are some of your underrated animated films? Because I feel like there's so many out there that don't get enough love because they're not Pixar or they may, even if they are DreamWorks, they're not your Kung Fu Pandas or sure. Despicable Me's or whatnot. But I'd love to know, you know, what are some of your underrated animated uh, films? Yeah, this is this is right in my Q zone. Uh, yeah, 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 this is I like this just stuff. this is our right up our alley. All this stuff. This yeah, is what we do. yeah, every, all of this. every Thursday, uh, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We gotta have you on, by the way. Send that <laughs> plug. Put that plug we gotta in. have you. It's all about. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah. So I I love I love animated stuff, and I love that there's been like Spider Verse kind of changed like the audience's big perspective on like oh these can be something different. It doesn't just have to be a Pixar thing. Um. But let's see what, oh, my girlfriend's been getting me into Satoshi Kon. So Paprika, uh, Perfect Blue, incredible, uh, you know, definitely adult animation. Very, sure. very crazy stuff. Um, uh, the House is like a really good stop motion anthology that came out mm. on Netflix like last year or the year before. Mm. Uh, it's like four stories. Very cool. I like that one a lot. Um, Fire and Ice, old school. But uh, wow. Ralph Fox, uh, Basky, who did, um, you know, the Lord of the Rings movies and then animated by Frank Frazetta and James Gurney, who did Dinotopia and Thomas Kincaid does like the background stuff. And the guy who did Aeon does the plates. Fire and Ice is incredible. Go watch Fire and Ice. It's so sick. A lot of rotoscoping, old school animation. Love it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it for me. Oh, Kubo and the Two Strings. Kubo and the Two Strings, I think, is Ooh, a, right. a modern classic. And I don't yeah. think it gets enough love. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. But a sponge, what you got? Um, so I think a lot of good stuff got lost in the nineties, early two thousands, uh, especially in the nineties, like my childhood. Uh, we're back, a dinosaur story. I feel like it's criminally underrated movie. Uh great themes, great songs, great, great energy. Uh just a bunch of dinosaurs in New York City. Uh, nice. I, I have like very strong memories of watching that film as a kid. Uh, I think Soul is really underrated. No one talks about it, but they should. It's one of the most emotional movies I've seen as an adult, yeah. uh, animation uh, wise. Um, another one from my childhood, Ants. Bugs Life uh, killed Ants. Yeah, it was right. <laughs> right. It, it was really good, and Bugs Life just kind of yeah, with uh, with Stallone in it. Yeah, just That's yeah, Stallone. Right. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Bugs Life just kind of threw it down and no one ever heard from it again. But it was it, it was a really great movie. Um, Balto, I think, was my first hero. OK, uh, really loved Balto when it went to get a, a husky after that for a long time. A husky mix to be like yeah. Balto. Yeah, um, I think the Prince of Egypt is underrated. Oh, Prince of don't get me started on the Prince. You know you can't bring up the Prince of Egypt. God damn, the that Prince movie's of so Egypt. good. It's, it's like yeah, I think people may have avoided it because it was like a Christian flick, but it was like it's so much more. Like it's, it's so good. The, the, and the, the animation style, the music. I mean, God. they don't make them like that anymore. They just don't do it anymore. Uh, wow. And lastly, I think Osmosis Jones. Osmosis Jones is underrated. So Why don't we good. talk about Osmosis Jones? So dude? good. <laughs> Chris Rock, come on, good yeah. stuff. Oh, good. And then, uh, you know, not just that, but the, the Bill fact Murray. It's, it's yeah, it's animated, but it's also real life too, like that back and yeah. forth. Yeah, Bill Murray. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, great. Gosh, we're, we're, did we just become best friends? I mean, yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta come on. You gotta come hang out on the Twitch stream. Oh, love to man, have you. I'd, yeah, I'd yeah. love to be on. Love to be on. Uh, there, there's a couple for me. One of them is a throwback. It's it's one of my daughter's first favorite animated films. Um, 2005's Hoodwinked. Oh yeah, so good. It's got Little Red Riding Hood. She goes by Red, and it blends all these different stories in there. But like just the subtle like dry humor that's also thrown in, and the yeah. Big Bad Wolf and everything else. Hoodwinked, definitely check it out uh, for you listening out there. It, it, that one was very far under the radar. I felt like. Uh, more recent one, I feel. I don't want to say recent, but if it's on, I'm watching it. And I think it's been on Netflix a lot, so I've been watching it a shitload, is Megamind. I think oh. Megamind <laughs> is hysterical. I love Will Ferrell as, as a voice actor. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I like a lot of his movies. Some of them are great. Some of them are, uh, you know. But at the end of the day, I think he's a great voice actor, just like uh, when he was in Strays, which did come out, even though it's not animated. But I think he does great as as a as a voice actor. And, and Megamind is just fantastic with Brad Pitt. And I believe Tina Fey pays, uh, plays the love interest. And then you got Jonah Hill 
who uh, ends up becoming the the villain. And what was my last one here that I had written down? Uh, nine. Um, oh. I, I, was just outstanding. <laughs> so good. It's a little dark. Oh. Um, you know, it's not yeah. exactly what you want to show your five year old, but uh, <laughs> what a story though. And just the yeah. way it's directed and everything. It's uh, that's another one I feel like, like the hardcore fans know about, but everybody else is just like, uh, yep. go away. Yeah. Oh, that's such a yeah. good one. I'm mad I didn't have that on my list. It's so good. Yeah, I love nine. Yeah. Hey, we all got good lists, and they're not all the same. So we're we're doing yeah, exactly. Doing all right. Right here. We're doing we're good. good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, last topic, but definitely not least. Um, you know, I'd love to get your take on some favorite TV show theme songs. This is something that we host a lot of trivia nights here in Greensboro. Uh, I think we're up to like seven now. We have different people doing it. And usually we have a music round and, you know, usually once or twice, not once a month, but at least once every couple of months, we'll have like a TV show theme song round. Nice. So I've never had the opportunity to ask anybody, actually any of these questions, which is great. Oh, nice. So you guys are, you know, the Playing first, the most. but I would love to know <laughs> some of your, you know, favorite TV show theme songs. Yeah, this is well, so dangerous. It's so it's so, so it's so dangerous, and it could I call for some singing. It could, it's a yeah. lot. A lot can happen here. Hey, this, this isn't sixty minutes. Let's make it happen. <laughs> okay, because Spence probably has thirty. There's a good I, chance I, he has twenty to thirty. I choices. do not have self control. We, we established this. Let it let it loose, my friend. Let it loose. <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. Um. All right. All right. Um. Sopranos it has to be shouted out. I think it's probably the best of all time. Plus, mm -hmm. it's just that's that's like for a certain period of time that was my drive to work so just the whole intro the opening theme and then the song yeah. is incredible fits so well iconic um succession come on it's it's great yeah you, you can't sit down listening to it that shit goes um, so hard i have it on my playlist like i literally yes. have it on my gym playlist you yes. have to. yeah <laughs> it's so yeah. hype yeah it's really <laughs> hype um i have one here that i'll save for spence but i know he's gonna say it um <laughs> Attack on Titans, the the final season, the rumbling song. Yes. Like, come on, that's I a good playlist song one. as well. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Um, Malcolm in the Middle, you're not the boss of me now. Come on, Ooh, it's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's always sunny for just using stock, uh, you know, royalty free music mm -hmm. and then making yeah. it iconic. Uh, mm -hmm. really great stuff. And then, um, finally, Twin Peaks. I'm rewatching all Twin Peaks now, and the the theme every time it comes on, it's haunting. It's weird. It's like a little off putting, but like it fits the vibe of the show so well. So yeah, Twin Peaks for sure. Yeah, but that's a good list. Yeah, I know that's that's banging. I'm trying to like make sure I got all mine caught. That's up. a good list. <laughs> I can't I can't believe you didn't you didn't say any of the ones that are on mine. I tried. I, to, I he was, did I say he saved you one. <laughs> I thought you were, yeah. Well, let me, I'm gonna maybe say that that one's Game of Thrones, perhaps. I yeah. I let you have that one. Okay, yeah. Game of Thrones, obviously on the list. I think the best theme song of all time is Cheers. Nice. So I don't think that anybody could take that away from it. <laughs> like it's insanely catchy. And um anyone who hears it, even if they haven't seen the show, sings yeah. it and they don't even know where it's from. Um, but shout out Fresh Prince, um, one of my top five, probably. Um, Vikings, which I'm rewatching again. Something about that song is like if they had a billboard top 100 in that time of the Vikings, that would be number one for years. <laughs> um true blood goes hard true mm. blood goes incredibly hard um i watch that sometimes just to hear the theme song in the first first like four five minutes of the show um friends uh can't beat that and i lied you did have two of mine sopranos and succession <laughs> yep, yep, yeah yep. you did have two also of mine. one that i thought you'd say this is a show spence got me on it's called evil lives here it's got like oh. 14 seasons. It's just one of those true crime, one yeah. person getting interviewed about a horrible thing that happened to him. But the theme song is so good. It's I don't crazy. know why, but it's so The knocking. Good. Yeah. yeah. Evil lives here. ID discovery. It's yeah. <laughs> go, go take a listen. Your life will be forever changed. Great I'm show to too. That. I'm, I'm literally writing it down right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that it. I mean, it opens crazy. It opens yeah. pretty. Crazy. Really sets the mood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, good stuff there. Um, so the only ones you guys took of mine, Succession. I mean, when I first, and I was late to the show with Succession. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think my wife and I started watching it maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. and the moment that beat dropped, I was just sitting there like mean mugging <laughs> TV, like, <laughs> yeah. oh, 
Damn. What is yeah. happening? Yeah. <laughs> and I like to do this thing to where if I really like something, I will play it out within 24 hours and it drives my wife crazy. Uh -huh. We were like yeah. in the car, I downloaded it on iTunes, of course, and I'm just sitting there driving like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah it's a great driving song it definitely oh, is a good, so if, good. if you go about the, if you're about to go close the deal you gotta put it on <laughs> yes. you gotta put yes. on succession <laughs> <laughs> um i got definitely got some throwbacks on here especially um uh, well just just a, like i think the number one theme song that i can relate to as a kid was the theme from unsolved mysteries so that one you know, you got, and I know that they like brought the show back on Netflix, but the original Unsolved Mysteries theme, if you look it up after the show, like I said, this was hey, late hey. 80s, early 90s with Robert. I don't want to say Robert Half. I, Robert Stack, I think his name was, was the host. Okay. But of course, these mysteries were not solved, but the intro right. would definitely get you in. It had like a very like X Files feel. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So X Files kind of got inspiration yeah. from that. From that. Shout out to X Files too. Yeah. 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 X Files is great too. X Files, another one. Um, another one back to my childhood. Married with children, the love and marriage with okay. uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh, you know, and this was when when Fox was just coming out. You know, I think Fox really really helped push the just the genre in general with shows like the Simpsons, Mary with children, the Tracy Allman mm -hmm. show, things like that. And of course in living color, can't forget that. No. Yeah. Um, yep. Brooklyn nine, nine. I just really love, I know. Yeah. I get into it. Like these, this is like my no skip playlist, right? When you put yeah. on yeah. the show, I hear you the intro. I'm like, hell no, I'm not. Skipping. Yeah. Same. Um, the office of course is a no skip for yeah. me. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Always, always good. I thought uh, Brett would be here, so I didn't put <laughs> the office on mine. <laughs> yeah, he would I'll have take, said I'll it. take over yeah. for Brett on that one. Brett, there you go. To Shout out to you, buddy. Um, How to Make It in America has oh my God, a great, yeah. great opening theme song. Shout out to the guys out there. They have a new podcast called Almost Made It. Been checking it out about mm -hmm. the show, but also everything else kind of in between. Um, Aloe, I cannot remember the artist's name. But uh, the name of the song is "I Need the Money." Just a a great a, setup to the show. Really. Underrated show too. Oh, so underrated, and mm -hmm. it's such a quick watch. If you've not seen "How to Make It in America," you could literally yeah. binge it all in a day. Yeah, so two seasons, twenty five minute soon. episodes. You can bang right through it. Came out, you know, it was a Mark Wahlberg production. This was like after Entourage, where HBO kind of cooled down a little bit before Game of Thrones came in. So it was like that weird mm -hmm. kind of bow. Yeah. Uh, area that we're in i, I also love... shout out entourage great theme song oh yes yes <laughs> true yes that's <laughs> true yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah how did i forget that uh, <laughs> incredible another hbo one tales from the crypt that one really Ooh. set the show up such a banger it's a shame it's not on max now apparently there's another i think it might be on pluto or one of these other streaming platforms because uh, apparently hbo when Tales from the Crypt left HBO. They didn't hold on to the rights for it, which is why you can oh, okay. Tales from the Crypt episodes on there, but some great uh, scary television. And then um, last but not least, I, I like the Better Call Saul intro. I just, oh, yeah. just like, just perfect, just simple, right to it. It's like, all right. It just gives that Better Call Saul vibe. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. that would be yeah. a ringtone if this was a <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I got a sleeper. One sleeper. Okay. One sleeper here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon Tales. Oh, oh, oh Dragon oh. Tales. Man. Goodness, Come on now. Goodness. You got you got two air horns for that. <laughs> While you say Dragon Tales, I'm gonna go with DuckTales too. So okay. oh yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm so done. That'll be the next show. We gotta do best animated theme TV show theme songs. That'll Ooh, be oh yeah. With it for sure. So for um, you know, those of you listening, those of you watching. Where is going to be the best place? I know you mentioned Twitch earlier, Instagram. <laughs> Go ahead and, and drop those plugs out there. Let people know where to find you, how to find you, and, uh, you know, what's coming up next. Any any events, Ooh. any other live streams? You know, we'd love to know what's coming down the pipeline as, uh, you know, it's crazy. We're going to be in August next week, so summer's already almost over. So, you know, what's coming up in the fall That's for uh, the whole youth? I know. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. It came and went too fast. Josh, you want me to you want me to do the 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 promo or or, or do you want to take over the spiel? <laughs> I could do I'll, it. I'll, I'll, 
Uh, all right. Well, how about you run down the social media and then I'll let them know okay. what we got coming there up. There you go. All right, here we go. Tag team, tag team. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can find us on the Holy Goofs everywhere. Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We are the Holy Goofs, plural, YouTube. Uh, on all the social media platforms, uh, go check us out. Uh, we love bringing you content weekly. Uh, we do a, t- a Twitch stream every Thursday at 7.30 Eastern PM, 7.30 PM Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we also go on randomly throughout the week as well. Check us out, mm-hmm. the Holy Goofs on Twitch. And what we got coming up next, Josh? Um, well, speaking of Twitch, we just passed uh, our 900 follower mark. So we're on the road to 1,000, as we say. And we're doing some cool stuff along the way, building up to like a big IRL stream at 1,000. So if you're on Twitch or maybe you just don't know what live streaming is but want to check it out, come by. I, I think we're a good friendly entry into this space. We don't yell. It's not drama farming. Uh, it's it's mostly like this. We're hanging out. We're talking about movies. We're having a good time playing video games. So, yeah, come yeah. come check us out on Twitch. Also in the fall, spooky, spooky, spooky month. We do some fun things for for Halloween. So yeah, we're gonna play some scary games. I'm terrible at being cool and chill uh, during spooky times. <laughs> so true. if you're into watching someone pee their pants, not really, but mentally, maybe I don't know. Don't write it off. <laughs> <laughs> Come see us for spooky month. The holy goofs on Twitch and everywhere else. There you go. P may be included, may not be included. <laughs> Could be. Bring your own just in case. But yeah. You <laughs> never know. Hold it in. Hold it in. <laughs> so, we'll get started. so awesome, fellas. Hang out with us here for just a little bit. Again, big shout out to Spencer and Josh and the Holy Goose for joining us. Yeah.